This mead right here got real funky on me. I think I fixed it though, and I wanna show you how to easily fix a bad mead with a simple solution. Here we go. All right, so in today's video, I have um, quite an interesting unintentional experiment. This right here is a blueberry mead that I made. Now I used three and a half pounds of blueberry uh, blossom, um, I should say blueberry traditional mead, three and a half pounds of blueberry honey that I got, one gallon of water, two grams of Kvaik Voss, and I added some yeast nutrient, which I used for a made, oh. So I essentially just threw the ingredients together, mixed them up, and uh, I started this thinking that I hadn't already done a blueberry traditional mead, and uh, come to find out, I had. Anyways, I threw that stuff together. I then decided after it fermented out, um, which it started at 1.130, it ended at 1.000, it is definitely done. Um, it really blew through all of that. Uh, fermented out, I decided to go ahead and oak it. So what I've done or did is I put an oak spiral in and I put a, a about a half of an oak spiral, which each one of these is graded for three gallons. Here's where I messed up. I forgot about the mead for a long time. So this oak spiral sat in for far too long. And this glass right here, I've got four glasses in front of me. I'll explain them in a moment. This is the regular what I have right here. Let me tell you what I'm gathering from this mead. Okay, so right off the bat, when you stick your nose up to it, you get so much oak. It's literally like um, the oak is just so overpowering and it's got a, a very heavy tannic like nose to it, which normally tannic value comes from a palate tasting portion. This I'm gathering on the nose even. I can, I can tell it's gonna be, um, uh, I don't wanna say thick, maybe thick. Yeah, so this one, the nose is super strong, very, very oak heavy. The taste of it is also very oak heavy. It's also, um, I don't wanna use the word chunky, but it's a little bit odd. Now, um, I think this one got real funky on me. By itself, it is pretty weird. In fact, I had my friend doing the most taste it while he was over here, so let me show you what he said about it. BC, what do you think of this mead? You're really, you're really selling it. So <laughs> the immediate, ooh, the immediate flavor is wood. Yes. Like not not tannin <laughs> or no. oak, but oak spiral. <laughs> but you know, almost like if you like grabbed like a cube of plywood and sucked on it. Get a couple oak uh, oak cubes and just kind of chew on it for a little bit. <laughs> like so, it's the type of thing where you know like. It's like bad medicine where when you go back for the second drink and you're a little bit like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like Robitussin. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I won't puke. I can do this. Ah, it just tastes like wood. <laughs> I don't remember what I put this oak spiral in, huh. but also, um, starting gravity 1130 and it huh. fermented out. So fortunately I have never over oaked something. <laughs> I'm really glad to know what that's like when you do it, but oh man, it's like sucking on a baseball bat. Yeah, I, so... It's, it's, the honey flavor is there, and there's a, a, a nice bit of acidity there, but as soon as you exhale, it just tastes like bark. <laughs> like, like, like I licked an old musty tree. Oh, well, Interesting. thank you for experimenting and experiencing yeah, cheers. this. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> so that's what he thought of the mead. Now, I decided that this is not really what I wanna do. I over-oaked this thing. I left the oak spiral in for way too long. And normally, sometimes you could, you could say, well, this mead sucks, maybe I should just like toss it out. And you can, I could absolutely take and, and dump this thing because there's no way I'm pulling oak flavor out. What I wanted to do was try and fix it. So I have a couple of uh, alternatives. Alternative number one, I'll just run through each one. First of all, I've got the same thing here. This is the regular version. I've got the regular version plus more honey. I believe that this could be a solution to over oaking 
to a mead that has got some weirdness to it because more honey will promote sweetness, will promote more floral characters and bring some life back into it, so to speak. So that's what I have here, back sweetened with blueberry honey. This right here is a blend of that mead right there and a uh, orange blossom traditional mead, which was also oaked. So this has oaking flavors in it as well, but it, it's, uh, it's orange blossom. So it's got some counter flavor profile. And the last one here, this is this mead, a mix of this mead and um, a blueberry traditional mead. Notice that I didn't use any like uh, fruit or mellow mel mixing. You could absolutely do that. You could mix in whatever kind of mead you want to, to blend them. But yeah, let's start with this one right here. This is with blueberry blossom honey to help back sweeten to see what happens. I can already tell you the nose on it is way, yeah, way less uh, in, in my face. I think the honey um, brings some sweetness, some brightness to this, which is necessary. It's still there, but it's, it's uh, tame. Yeah, let's taste it. Ooh, that definitely does help. It's still oak heavy. It's still kind of like you're chewing on, on a piece of wood, um, but it is tempered down some. The sweetness helps to contrast against the oaking that we have. And there is the floral note. There is the brightness you get from the honey character. It's still very thick and adding honey uh, built out the body even more than there was. And it was already very thick. Yeah, it's definitely helpful. And so, Adding honey to a uh, overly oaked mead helps. Adding honey to really any mead generally helps. Sweetness uh, can hide a lot of problems. So a lot of people will use that as a solution for fixing their problems. They'll do that and add honey back to it to back sweeten. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's just part of the world. Okay, then that's the back sweetened with regular honey. This is a blend of orange blossom and our blueberry blossom. Yeah, the nose is vastly different. A lot of the tannic value is gone from this, which I used a 50-50 blend, by the way, of these two. It wasn't anything else. It was my little um, turkey baster. I did a full pour of it in here and a full pour of the other one. So it's 50-50. You do get a nice mix of both honey characters now. The orange blossom has its tropical notes. It has its brightness in its own way. And the blueberry, of course, has brightness, but also a little more earthy dark notes. Ooh, even with the orange blossom being oaked, that is a nice parallel. That has a lot of tannic value, a lot of body to it. That's good. I was a little worried that double oaking, so to speak, um, would have been too much in my face, but I think the blend is nice here. I'm a fan of this. This needs a little sweetness to it, but it is tempered down so much of that in your face woodiness from the original. Okay, and the last one, here is the uh, blueberry uh, traditional that we had mixed in with this one. So we got double blueberry essentially, but we have a, dr a dry blueberry. This one that I blended with went dry and it kept it dry. So let's see what we got. Ooh, yeah, that, uh, that nose is back. Woo. The oakiness back in, <laughs> I, can, I can like feel it burning right here. It's just like, that yeah, man, that is not a natural smell. Oh, I mean, it's a weird smell. Ooh, that's not the ticket. Yeah, this is not sweet enough. The dry, the, the blueberry I, I blended with, going from a dry blueberry to adding this in, has not fought against the um, tannic and the, the oak notes. That's actually like even more in my face. Yeah, okay, that's not it. Blueberry, traditional, dry, not the fix for this. Blueberry and orange blossom blend works well. Original, we talked about. And then of course, back sweetening. So the whole purpose of this video is not for me to sit here and, and toot my own horn and say that I've fixed a mead, but rather to encourage you when you run into a situation where you make a mead that doesn't pan out, which happens, don't worry. Try to uh, fix it in a multitude of ways. You can blend. Uh, with another mead. You can of course just back sweeten with honey, whatever type you want to use. You can add other characters. So let's say that you made a sizer and you were like, I just, 
it's not, it, it's just weird. It has something weird to it. You can add more apples or you can say, hey, let's go ahead and add some uh, pear in there. And so we got a pear and apple and you can blend more characters. When you blend more characters in, oftentimes when you do this, you're pulling away attention from weird flavors. So if you do have an off apple character and you're like, I need something else. Hey, that cinnamon stick might help you um, feel that out. Now, this doesn't work for everything. There are some times when you make a mead that it does not work out, that back sweetening doesn't fix it, that blending doesn't fix it, that adding extra ingredients doesn't fix it. And those situations are when your yeast are stressed. Now, we all know that yeast get stressed when they are not given proper nutrition. So I encourage, encourage you and implore you to use proper nutrition when fermenting with yeast, especially with mead. That means you're using a yeast nutrient, dimonium phosphate, fermate O, fermate K, um, yeast holes, anything to help your yeast thrive. When they are stressed, they create fusels, and fusels are off alcohols that often present themselves as bad aromas or bad tastes, and you notice them very quickly in your brew. Those are very hard to fix. Some of them are gonna fade away over time. Most of them won't. Most of them are just gonna hang around. So stressed yeast taste is hard to fix. An awkward yeast taste or an awkward flavor in there might, is, is fixable. So for the most part, I try not to dump my meads unless I see them as a total loss. I haven't had many that have been total losses. Most of mine that have been total losses have been due to some sort of um, infection or something where I was like, hey, that, that could have a mold in it somehow, so let's not deal with that. So don't obviously try to fix something that has mold in it. If your brew ever has mold in it, stay away and don't try and, and fix it. Um, you're not gonna be able to scoop your mold off the top and, and preserve it. I'm sorry, but that's just not how it works. That's a loss. So use proper nutrition to start with a good brew and then blend things. This mead didn't pan out. It was not intentional. I did not intentionally try to over oak this. I forgot. You might go through it in a similar experience and find that you left your, your brew on the yeast for too long. You over oaked it. You left the fruit on for too long or not, not long enough, anything like that. Try to fix it before you give up. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. At the end of the day, your ultimate goal should be to make more mead and to share your mead. I hope you will take that charge and run forward with it. Go support your local meaderies and any online source for mead you can find and make sure that you are uh, being a, a, a good community member here. There are lots of ways to get plugged into the community YouTube's a good one. There's Discord servers like myself. Um, there's Facebook pages. There's Reddit. There are lots of communities within our mead making world to join. And I hope you will join us there because we are all seeking to do the same thing. And that is make better mead. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time with a different video. Cheers. Cheers.